Good morning, boys and girls. I am just giving a quick update here. And I've been very quiet. My apologies on that. But things have been so crazy. So uh, we've been just getting sick. non start back to back to back. I have been sick four times since we got here. And my little boy has been sick five times since we got here. So there's clearly a period of adjustment taking place right now. Um... And it's important to frame it that way as well. I mean, that is essentially what it is. New environment, period of adjustment. But same like my little boy, he's, you know, five times, you know, like a five month period, man. That is shame. That's really difficult for anybody, small or big. And he's been saying, oh, I'm sick, I'm sick. And I saw a really cool saying that you are not sick. You're either healing or you are adapting. So I'm trying to ingrain that in him because how we interpret what happens to us is infinitely more important than the things that actually happen. It's corny, it's cliche, but life really is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you deal with it. And trust me, that's coming from somebody who has had some crazy shit happen to him in life. Uh, other than that, what is um, the day-to-day -day like living here, right? The day-to-day, -day, yeah, is, I suppose it's just start from the top. Uh, I wake up very early, three to five o'clock in the morning, somewhere in between that vicinity, depending on how unpredictable the night prior may go. Um, then I'll do some breathing exercises. I take a cold bath. Uh, I stretch first and I take a cold bath and I do this because it helps me to naturally fly, uh, fight the inflammation in my body. All right, so it's it's a self-empowerment routine and it's religious. I've been doing this consistently for a very long time. I don't even know, years. So that's what works for me. Everybody needs to have something that's deeply rooted in self-empowerment because you are the root from which everything in your life grows. So if you want to be a better parent, you want to be better at your job, you want to be a better partner, you want to be a better family member, whatever it is, in order to get the most out of yourself in relation to productivity, you need to ensure you have a self-empowering ritual. And you need to religiously follow it, guys. Because, it, you know, as the saying goes, you can't pour from an empty cup. Right, you gotta take care of yourself first. So that's how I start my days. Um, I also do a lot of earthing, you can see right now, barefoot over there. Even within our very limited science, as I've said before, we can actually measure the benefits of that. So but check it out if you haven't, it's very interesting. There's a loads of peer reviewed research. In Japan, it is actually recognized as an actual medicinal therapy that will be prescribed to you, which is to spend time in nature. Then beyond that, my little boy, that's why I wake up so early, because that dude, he keeps me very, very busy. We rock and roll every day. That dude doesn't matter if he's sick or if he's healthy. He's got a take no prisoners attitude. He wants to, he wants to party, or as he would say, let go, let's go. <laughs> so he's super cool. We, we play, we party every day. It, it's very demanding though, you know, so it's, it's challenging because we're in a very remote location, so he, he's a bit more depending on me to show up for him on a daily basis. And um, and I'm happy to do that, man. Any As any loving parent knows, although it's exceptionally challenging, it's 10 times more rewarding. And that's something I would never have understood without being a parent. So it's, he's the greatest gift of all that little guy, man. Uh, beyond that, what else do I do? When I take my cold bath, by the way, I'm taking that cold bath in some mountain water. So you can see we yeah, in nature. That's one of the very the finer things about living here, right? Uh, but it is a two-way street. It's a double-edged sword. But like when I'm taking those baths, it's in it's in mountain water. So it's extremely refreshing. It's such a good feeling. And oftentimes I'm outside when I'm doing these baths, which is nice. I actually like it. It's it's very different to the Western way of taking a shower or whatever, which I also enjoy, don't get me wrong. But it, it's, it's something very refreshing about when you're in the mountains and then you've got 
water coming directly from the mountain the source of water is directly from the mountain and then you out in nature and you can hear the birds chirping and you can feel that kind of mist or the wind coming directly from the clouds because you're so high up so it's very cool man um but it is a two-way street you know there's good and there is also bad it's a double-edged sword people who <laughs> portray these things on social media which is just the endless charade of of bullshit overwhelmingly where people are competing as to who can have the most fraudulent presentation of their life and make it seem convincing it's actually quite sad but it is what it is man we're all on our own journey to each their own but it's a, it's a two-way street so yeah this is the finer part of it right it's like living in a nature reserve which is amazing there's wild cows running around which i'm got a love-hate relationship with i'm a little bit at war with those those guys right now they're cool i love cows man yeah. cows are cool What's that baby cow? Can you see the little baby cow there? Little baba cow, man. Cows are cool, but if they get into your vicinity, they eat everything, they shit everywhere. Come, come. Eh, 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 eh. Let's go. Come. Let's go, let's go. Come, 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 you too big boy. You're too big boy, come. Woof, 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 woof. Look at that, there's a nice clop of shit right there. Yeah, they are relentless, those people. Those, little, those guys, man. I was going to say, those little guys are actually pretty big. And then there's wild buffalo. Good morning, Mr. Water Buffalo. What's up, man? When I first got here, there was one that was like, was like checking me out, this dude. I thought, oh shit, this, this is not a good situation, man. Because I come from South Africa, where buffaloes will whoop a lion. But come to find out, they are actually very placid um, and this is a testament once again to the environment right the environment with its human being with it's an animal it has such a defining role on our character in its totality so for them they are more passive more placid because there's no predators yet for them and they've got a very uh, kind of reciprocal relationship with human beings i mean the cows are and the water buffalo which they call them karabao are proper <laughs> free range like they just rolling around free i mean the the native people will they'll eat them eventually but it's like when they're much older so they live really good lives it's cool to see there's somebody that loves animals um so that's cool man like you'll be walking around and there'll be one like literally just standing like right there or something you know I'm surprised i don't see any now but uh they, yeah, they, they're all over the place. There's one up there I can see. Way up there. I'm not even going to try. Can you see him? No, yeah, it's too far. Cameras, man. They never ever do the scenery justice. The, the scene that is around us justice. What else? I guess in terms of being a two-way street, to elaborate a little bit on that. Um, yeah, so the nature is great. You're getting clean food. You're getting clean water. Another wild thing is that the water here is running 24-7. And then the excess water actually goes back into the land, which is growing the rice. So it's a very reciprocal relationship, which I think is quite cool. But the, the downside to things, right, is let's say that you want to get something that's different. Maybe you don't want to eat rice every single day. <laughs> Maybe you want to get something a little bit different. Maybe you want to get your little boy something who's a three-year-old and he's hungry for experience in life. If you want to get him a toy, right? Um, and I'm not somebody that wants to withhold experience from my child. I'm a firm believer that it's our responsibility as parents to guide our children, from when, especially when they are very small, to enjoy new experiences rather than them hunger for those new experiences and feel as though they cannot get them with your guidance. I feel like in the long run, my interpretation is even if it seems small, if you can't provide them the guidance to where they can gain access to new experiences now, it's going to be problematic when they get older. So I want to ensure that I can always do the, the, the best I can to guide him to whatever new experience he wants to have in a healthy kind of a way. But if I want to get him, let's say, a cool toy, we're talking about a six-hour journey. We're talking about hiking down the mountain, then i got to get all the way to the city, 
it's it's complicated you know it's very complicated let's say i want to get him something because he grew up obviously in the city in a more industrialized area so he's very familiar with pizza and all of these things um and of course as a mindful parent you want to always get the healthiest option that you can find which can be very difficult in the philippines for people that live here or visited you you know what i'm talking about damn it's ridiculous but then it becomes a mission right so what would be very convenient in other places is very complex over here it can be very difficult even small things man uh, because it is a little shop but for me to get to the shop it's it's a hike man so that kind of stuff um, is a bit of the downside to it. And then on the other end, there, there's, it's, there can be very big cultural differences, right? Uh, one of the things that perturbs me that really concerns me in a big way, man. And I, I've seen this coming for a long, long time. You know, it, does, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. But the internet in the right hands probably represents one of the greatest if not the greatest discoveries of human beings ever because it now allows and permits access to people worldwide to just endless amounts of information and that results in innovation um, it results in a broadening of awareness a broadening of knowledge and when you have a broadening of awareness a broadening of knowledge that actually results in new opportunity because opportunity and freedom of choice are synonymous with the level of knowledge you have the more knowledge you have the more you can see the more options you have to engage in new courses of action however in the wrong hands it represents the worst possible thing that you can imagine and uh and, and, and it's used for the purpose of manipulation on a grand epic unprecedented scale and the reason why i'm mentioning this you might be saying what's that got to do with the price of oil the reason why I'm mentioning this is because what I'm seeing, and I, I mean, it's so obvious. I could see this coming from a mile away. Is it's being used to get to people that traditionally have lived in very remote locations that are now coming online for the first time ever. So the internet in this region, we on this specific mountain, we are actually the only ones. There's very few people. You can count on like one or two hands how many people on this mountain are living around this area. Uh, I have the internet up here. I carry that shit all the way up the mountain. Um, Elon Musk's um, Starlink. And look, this is not me being an advocate for Elon Musk. Because I don't trust that dude, that dude any more than I trust the rest of them. I'm trying to put a neural link in my brain. Brother, I will slap the shit out of you. But, uh, you know, I had to get the internet up here. But there's other villages, neighboring villages, and there's also on the way here, you see lots of villages. And what do you see? People that have now just got on the internet very recently, been here for like a year or something, and more and, more and more people are coming online. And you're going to see this all around the world, guys. What you're going to find is that people are now glued to their phones around you, and also one-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old, with unrestricted access to the internet. It's acculturation. Acculturation is essentially when you can attack a culture and through clandestine means, you can then subjugate it. It's a neo-colonialism on a whole different level. And um, I know when you hear colonialism, some people... Um, anyways, let me not get too... Focus on the, the update, Gavin. <laughs> uh, rather than always taking a deep dive in everything. But yeah, so... That, that's a little bit disheartening to see the habits of the younger generation are very bad like the, the, the small ones the candy and stuff and when you're a parent you start to perceive the world in a very different way so that could be a, a deal breaker my little boy as a parent priority number one is your child that is your duty and it's a very serious duty shit needs to be taken seriously um and you want to protect your little ones to the best of your capability i'm not saying shelter them because when you shelter a child you also just put them in a position when they are where they are unprepared for what is yet to come in the future i'm saying no you protect them within the realm of logic especially when they're small because they're not in a position where they can make intelligent decisions about these things they make emotional decisions and so the environment is paramount, right? So it's, it's a two-way street is what I'm saying, guys. And I'm sure there's a lot more, but um, that's kind of the... It's a summation. It's a quick little summation what comes to my head. 
Otherwise, yeah, man, just taking it uh, one day at a time. <laughs> Things have definitely been challenging. But uh, I'm optimistic, man. It's pointless to be anything other than optimistic. And I say that as somebody who's in a situation where I can certainly choose to be pessimistic, guys. But one of the things that makes us really strong, and I'm somebody who has a lot of experience with overcoming hard, crazy, difficult shit, so I suppose it gives you more confidence. But um, irrespective of what environment you may find yourself in right now, guys, your external environment, whether it's chaotic, whether it's unstable, the significance, as I was actually mentioning earlier, about having an almost religious-like routine is you can create internal stability, some extent of that, some degree of that, some foundation of that. And in doing so, if you empower yourself enough internally, you can find the strength to rise above the external environment. I've done this before, I'm going to do it now, and, um, and you can do it too. Now, what people need to also recognize is that, as, again, as corny and cliche as it sounds, you have no idea how strong you are until being strong is the only choice that you have. Because oftentimes people say, oh, I can do what you're doing, living in the mountain stuff. Yes, you could. You've just never been put in a position where you didn't have another choice but to pursue a particular path. So whatever you're going through right now, guys, just, just hang in there. Stay strong. In fact, a uh, cool little proverb about those cows is these are some mountain cows, right? You can see, I don't know. Can you guys see that dude up there? He's way... Let me see. Can I do this with my finger? Oh, there, there you go. That little white spot up there. That's a cow up there, man. Freaking mountain cow, son. Um, the cool thing about that is where do, you, what do, where, where do cows normally stay? Cows stay on flat surfaces and over the years and the generations a lot of these cows unfortunately they have indeed passed away man because they've fallen because it's an unnatural environment right but since that time they have found a way to adapt and just as is true with my body i was saying now I'm getting sick all the time but if you're you know as the saying goes when things go bad don't go with them and they're talking about your mind you can find a way to persist through it you will adapt so whatever you're going through and i know the world's going through all kinds of crazy shit right now we can adapt just take a one day at a time have a self-empowering ritual guys do not compromise on that because if you compromise on that the rest of your life will be compromised period um, and then lastly i just want to give a shout out to my boy martin he came all the way up to the mountain and he surprised me. Hey, oh, Martin! <laughs> oh my God, man! Oh my God! It's good. It's quite the journey, eh? <laughs> sneaky, sneaky dude, man. Um, and it was no joke. The journey when he got up here, he was like, because <gasps> that first time coming up is <laughs> very, very tricky. But I love you, brother. Thank you so much. You are amazing. I really appreciate that, man. It's a special gift, special surprise that I'll hold with me for the rest of my life. But anyways, wherever you guys are, I hope you have yourself an amazing day. And um, like I said, man, you can adapt, you can adjust. Don't let the bullshit get you down. You are stronger than you know. Love you guys.